welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover Dirofilaria images, so join me, you'll learn something today. The longer the heartworm is present in the dog, the higher the risks are to that dog, and the more concern we have. Mild is a dog that would be asymptomatic, or maybe they'll have an occasional cough. A moderate dog will have a cough and also exercise intolerance and abnormal lung sounds. A severely affected dog would also have signs of heart disease on top of all of the other symptoms. They might also have an enlarged liver or other organ function abnormalities. These dogs can also die. It's very important to note that we do not have a treatment for cats that get heartworm, so prevention for them is incredibly, incredibly crucial. The moment a dog is tested heartworm positive, we must immediately restrict their exercise. Dogs that exercise, get excited, or get elevated temperatures are the ones that have the highest risk of complication. And so the restriction of exercise is an absolute must from the moment they test positive until they are two months after the very end of their treatment. Exercise is the most significant risk factor when we are thinking about complications from heartworm disease. Because we do not have any tests that will tell us the exact worm burden, it is important that we treat all dogs as if they have significant risk of complication. Once a dog's test positive, we do start them on doxycycline four weeks before we give the first melarsamine injection. Injection. This is because the doxycycline kills a bacteria that comes along with the heartworm called Wolbachia, and the doxycycline reduces the pathology that's associated with the worms dying as we progress through the treatment process. We will also start a preventative medication at this point because we do not want any additional microfilariae or larvae to infect the dog and develop into more adult heartworm burden. Before we give the injections of melarsamine, we will pre-treat with an antihistamine. We will also pre-treat with steroids and continue steroid medication throughout the treatment process as that also reduces the risks of inflammation causing problems as the heartworms are dying. It's also very common to give medication to help the dog stay calm and relaxed. And we also often give pain management medication as the injection of melarsamine can be quite painful. Now the current standard is to do a three injection protocol of melarsamine. You give one injection and then one month later you give a second injection, 24 hours later you give a third injection. This protocol ends up being around 98% of Effective, which is remarkably good and it also reduces the risks of side effects by doing the injections staggered in this manner. It is pretty common practice that the dog will be hospitalized for 24 hours after each injection. This is because that is the time frame that you are most likely to have pain that needs addressing or that you could see side effects. As the worms die they can cause pulmonary thromboembolisms this can result in breathlessness, syncope, pain, fever, and so on. So it is very important to carefully watch the dog for 7 to 10 days after their injections, but you can occasionally see issues even up to 4 weeks later. Now I know that this is quite a serious procedure in order to treat heartworm. It's not something to be taken lightly. However, this is the only on-label and effective way to treat heartworm, and this is the safest way because the longer the heartworm stay in the body, the more damage they do to the heart and lungs, the more secondary health issues you will have, and eventually it will kill the dog. After the dog goes through the treatment process, then we test for antigens six months later, and presuming all is well, we simply keep them on the heartworm prevention and do the yearly heartworm testing as we would for any other dog. If the worm load is large enough that they develop cable syndrome. The heartworm actually needs to be surgically removed from the tricuspid valve, and this needs to happen within two days, otherwise the dog will die. Another very common concern is that we will have dogs who test heartworm positive, but they may also need other medical care. If they classify under mild heartworm disease, so they are asymptomatic or all they have is a cough as far as symptoms go, then their risk of undergoing things like anesthesia is not any different from a dog that is heartworm negative. That said, if they have moderate or severe heartworm disease, then putting them under anesthesia or doing other medical treatments 
will increase their risk of having adverse outcomes. And so it would be recommended to delay those treatments when possible for moderate and severely affected dogs until their heartworm disease has been treated. And actually we need to wait a couple months after the end of that treatment before we would consider anesthesia for another purpose whenever is possible. Let's spend just a moment touching on some incredibly common myths that I'll hear floating around. One of the most common ones, they will say that they were told to use a slow kill method. This method doesn't exist. What they are telling people to do is simply use a preventative medication and while that will kill microfilaria and some of the larval stages of heartworm, it does not kill the adult heartworm. It is not slow killing anything. All that's happening is the heartworm are remaining in the dog and as time passes, they are causing more and more and more harm to the lungs and the heart and the rest of the organs of that dog. It is entirely inappropriate to try to uh, deal with a heartworm positive dog this way and it will contribute to the heartworm that are resistant to the prevention medications that we have. The only time that I would consider doing something like this is if that dog was not expected to live much longer due to other health issues and so there isn't a point to giving them the melarsamine injections but unless you are in that very rare scenario you must not deal with a heartworm positive dog that way it is not appropriate i will also have people tell me that there are herbal or all natural preventatives or treatments for heartworm. This is not true. There aren't any like this that are actually effective. If someone is telling you otherwise, they are lying to you. I do read every comment that you leave for me and this week I would like to highlight this one. Thank you so very much for everybody who leaves me comments and who asks questions and who shares additional information about their own situations. I always love to hear from you. If you have a future video topic that you would like me to consider, please leave it down below and I'll add it to my list. I do put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now. I hesitate to even put this in here, but I am in need of some of the foam that can be put up to reduce echo to help improve sound quality in the videos. So I will link a Ko-Fi. Please don't feel like you need to donate at all and I understand if you do not, please take care of you and yours first. That is way more important. It's more than enough if you comment on the video or like the video or share it with someone who you know needs the information. I really appreciate every time that you all do that.